It's Bigfoot Country Radio, Lee Ritchie, keeping you company on this fine Saturday afternoon. Joining me in the studio, and, and you know I love to showcase new talent and uh, some guys that maybe you're not familiar with. In the studio right now, it's Corey Lane. Hello, Corey. How you doing, man? We are doing good. Thank you so much for coming by and uh, and stopping by Bigfoot Country and, and enjoying upstate New York in, Absolutely. in the fall. Yeah, it's beautiful up here, man. Uh, and this town uh, is, is gorgeous. I mean, it really is. You have got a single out that uh, we're loving here between George Strait and George Jones. Yeah. It, it don't get much better than that. No, I mean, how, how in the world can you not fall in love between the two? You know, mm -hmm. uh, somebody's always had an experience with George Strait falling in love with one of his songs. And then George Jones falling in love with one of his songs. This is a song about... Uh, Falling in love between them. So that's why it's called Between George Strait and George Jones. Let's uh, catch up to where we are today. Uh, let's go back in time. Okay. And, uh, and where, where are you from and uh, how'd you get into this? Well, I'm from a small town, uh, about 2,000 people. It's called South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Um, it's home of Lodge Cast Iron Skillets, Cornbread Festival, and football. Uh, <laughs> it don't get better than that. That's <laughs> that's <it. laughs> um, but, you know, uh, growing up, uh, I'm a pastor. I was a PK and pastor's son, and uh, uh, ended up, you know, going rogue. I guess you could say. But uh, had a really, really tough childhood. Uh, had a really uh, tough uh, up until I was late twenties. I had a rough life. I mean, in all reality, man, I've I've sang all my life. My at two years old, my dad put me on a stool or a chair or something. We've got video of it, and um, he would do this, and he'd make me hit the note. So, you know, I would hit the note, and then uh, at four, somebody would be playing the piano, and I would walk up and just do exactly what they did. Really? And, yeah, so they thought they went and had me tested to see, you know, if I had some sort of uh, special gift or, or whatever. Sure. And, um, but uh, the doctor came out and said, you just have a savant on your hands, and I... It's been a part of my life, all my life. It's run. It runs through my DNA. Well, where, where was the point where you thought this is what I want to do? I was standing to make a living. I, you know what? I can honestly say I remember the day uh, I was standing on a stage. Uh, it was a worldwide singing competition, and um, I had won the state and uh, I had won the nationals or whatever. And I, I didn't. I wasn't a big competition, you know, guy, but. Uh, I think I just turned 18 or 17, one of the two. But I stood on that stage, and there was probably 60,000 people out in the crowd because this is a worldwide competition. It was in Indianapolis at the RCA Dome wow. when they still had yeah. that. And um, I got out there, and I was so nervous. And when the music started playing, I was like, oh, no, what am I going to do? And right as soon as I said, it's another... I, in my head, I said, I want to do this for the rest of my life. This is all I want to do. Very but, cool. I mean, going back, I was writing when I was 12 and 13 years old. Yeah. And so it's been... Do you remember those first songs? I, uh, some of them. Yeah. Yeah. What were they about when you're 12 uh, years old? Well, uh, girls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, to, I told mom she created a monster when she gave me two books when I was young, the Bible, and she gave me uh, the book Romeo and Juliet. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and uh, I said you created a monster when you did that. So. Oh, very um, cool. But I like proving people wrong. You know, when it comes to music, everybody's like, you can't do this on your own, and you have to conform and be a certain way. And I... I, I've never wanted to conform and be a certain way. I just want to be who I am. That's awesome. You know, and yeah. uh, I'd rather be me than an imitator. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. Corey Lane is our guest. We're going to come back in a minute and hear the single between George Strait and George Jones right here on Bigfoot Country Radio. It's Bigfoot Country Radio. Lee Ritchie on this Saturday afternoon. Corey Lane is joining me in the studio. We are about to play his, uh, it's the third single from your album, right? Yeah, actually, um... But this is the first to radio. The first radio single. So this yeah. may be the first time you hear this this gentleman between George Strait and George Jones. Give us a little introduction. It's written by Paul Overstreet, one of the best songwriters yeah. in country music. And uh, he uh, gave me the honor to cut the song, and uh, I loved it. So I cut it, and here we are. It's there you go. It's Corey Lane on Bigfoot Country Radio. I saw her sitting there beside that empty chair singing. Me down. She stood up and said. 
Bigfoot Country Radio between George Strait and George Jones. Great single, man. That great, great song. I really appreciate good, that. Good luck with that. If people listening are, are kind of digging that and, and dancing along at home, how can they get a copy? Um, they can go to my website, Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, Lane, L-A-Y-N-E, dot com. Um, every time I tell somebody my name up here, they're like, Corey Lang? Oh. And I'm like, no, Corey Lane. And uh, and then they it, say L-A-N-E. Yep, yep. <laughs> so it's, I always say Corey with an E and uh, Lane with a Y. There you go. Uh, but uh, CoreyLane.com, um, you can find me on all socials, uh, Corey Lane Music. And, uh, you know, uh, if you want to shoot a message or something like that and say, hey, I want to grab a, a CD, a shirt, or a hat, um, then... I'm I'm not the type of uh, artist that won't message you back. Very cool. We're going to come back and chat more with Corey on Bigfoot Country Radio. Don't go away. It's Bigfoot Country Radio on your Saturday afternoon. Joining me in studio is Corey Lane. Hey, Corey, we're uh, we're chatting about your new single, yeah. and uh, you've I couldn't help but notice you've got a guitar in your lap. I do. So that was my first clue that, <laughs> that you're about to do something for us here. Yeah. What, what are we going to hear? This is probably going to be the next uh, radio single. Uh, it's called uh, Let's Take Tonight. And, uh, Give us a little uh, background on that song. Uh, I wrote this about uh, my my divorce, and uh, you know, it's it was really a uh, a good way to get some anger out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's and, like therapy. Uh, it, oh, absolutely! It was anger and a little bit of hurt and a little bit of everything. But uh, when we released it to the socials, like the uh, you know digital platforms and stuff, we didn't. I didn't know how it would do. Yeah, it's got millions of streams on Fantastic. it. Fantastic, and. Uh, I'm like, I got to get this on radio. All right, you know. Man. So, uh, yeah, it's on this album as well, and uh, and, and, and the album is called Bend or Break. Bend or Break. Yeah, yeah. I, me and my buddy Greg Matthews wrote that song. Very and, cool. Uh, it's a really cool song about Vietnam. Well, here we go. We're gonna have some live Corey Lane here in the Bigfoot Country Studio. Take it. All right. I know it's been a long haul. And I know our hearts are changing, it's clear. We've run our race and finished it last. Soon our love will be. A thing of the past So let's 
let's take tonight and be real with ourselves cause we've tried and tried but that did not help yeah it was real once that shot on a hill So let's take tonight and be real with ourselves. See, time is a thing that we can't get back. Our hearts have moved on. Yeah, that's just a fact We can sit here and cry But that won't change a thing So I'll pack up my bags While you take off your ring Let's take tonight and be real with ourselves. Cause we've tried and tried, but that did not help. Yeah, it was real. Shot on a hill. So let's take tonight and be real with ourselves. Let's take tonight and be real with ourselves. That's Corey Lane on the Bigfoot Country Studios. Good job, man. Thanks, man. I that is I, that is a country song. I appreciate it. I think a string went, went awry. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch that. Take your eye out. Oh, um, yeah. Thank we're going to come back and uh, finish up with Corey Lane and uh, chat about We could talk for a lot. Uh, you got a lot of interesting things going on in your life. Yeah, uh, but, it's like uh, scrambled eggs. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> More music on the way. It's Bigfoot Country Radio. It's Bigfoot Country Radio on your Saturday. Lee Ritchie keeping you company. And uh, instead of being alone today, I've got company. We've got a guest in the studio. I hate being alone. I hate being alone. You know, it's like <laughs> I, I, every day I talk to thousands and thousands of people, but I'm yeah. alone. You know, yeah. it's it's... Listen, we appreciate you coming up here and stopping by. Man, I appreciate are, you. Are you healthy? Am I healthy? Yeah. I'm, I'm healthy. Yeah, You're healthy. I'm fat as a pig Because right well, I know, I, I hear that you went through a really bad bout of uh, COVID. Yeah, it was terrible. Um, me and my wife both had COVID at the same time. She's superwoman. She was able to not have to be put in the hospital, and her oxygen was always good. Good. But mine, I don't know what happened with me. Uh, being younger and everything like I am, I didn't think that it would affect me as as bad as it did. Mm-hmm. But on the 14th day of having COVID, I actually had to go into the hospital. The, four, uh, the fourth day that I'm in the hospital, that day they said, we want to put you on the vent or we need to put you on the vent. And uh, I said, what are my chances? They said, you got an 8% chance Ooh, on the vent. Gosh. Yeah. So I called, uh, he, the doctor called my wife. I turned it down. The doctor called my wife and said, told her, and she said, if he doesn't want to be on the vent, he's not going to be on it. So then this respiratory therapist came in the room, Bill Peppy guy. I mean, he was just happy as could be. Uh-huh. And he said, I'm going to save your life tonight. And I said, oh, thank you, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> and um, he said, breathe into this incentive spirometer all night. Don't fall asleep. Okay. He said it'll open the alveoli in your uh, lungs or something of that nature. And uh, I said, okay. Uh, And I was really scared, man. And that night I accidentally fell asleep. 
for 10 minutes. Oh, no. And when I did, I woke up to all these alarms going off and everything and doctors and nurses all around. And my heart rate went up in the 200s. My oxygen went down to in the 30s. And it was just steadily doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I, this nurse walked in and I looked to my left and started talking to her and she said I'm going to administer something to your heart and uh, slow your heart rate down but do you mind if I pray with you and I said please and I actually ran into the uh, respiratory therapist two months ago across the street from the hospital that I was in yeah and I was thanking him for saving me and he said oh no he said that we couldn't do anything because I remember him yelling no trach no trach but they were trying to push oxygen into my lungs with this apparatus or of some sort. And uh, he said, you looked over to your left and started talking. And then you looked up, uh, you turned your head back around and looked up. And I said, yeah, there was a nurse beside me said she was going to administer something to my heart. And he said, there was nobody <laughs> beside you. And your IV was in your right hand. And, I, and it, it dawned on me the other day, I was like, she came to my left side where my heart was. And I and I know I saw her and I know I talked to her. And he said that I looked over and started talking and nobody was there. And he said, But you prayed a prayer and it was it's burning my head. And I said, What did I say? Because I thought that I said something and I've been telling people I prayed this prayer. What exactly did I say? And he said, You looked up and with a normal voice. I was I was talking like this. Uh-huh, you know. Sure. Uh, Because I couldn't get air out. And he said, um, I looked up and said, my father in heaven, I'm not trying to make a bargain with you. Save me and I'll give you glory in everything I do, even in, you know, even in country, every aspect of my life. And uh, that's what I do. I go and give him glory for everything I do. So I'm giving him glory right now. That is awesome. I love I had a real encounter, and uh, so it's odd. I went in. I was in there for seven days. I like numbers. I was in there for seven days, and then... Three days went by, and I was able to walk out with no oxygen, and my oxygen was at 98. I've almost died like 17 times, man. You know, <laughs> uh, and but that's the time that I truly believe that everything in my life started changing. I wanted to be different. I wanted to be uh, better. Uh, you know, I still... I'm a man. I'm a human. I fall short daily, but... I still want to give him glory and everything, and I try and live the best I can. So, and that I stick good to notes, my guns. Good on note that, to bro. end on. Very good. That's yeah. awesome. Corey Lane is our guest. The uh, single between George Strait and George Jones. Check it out on his website. Follow him on Facebook and uh, all over social media. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me, man. More music on the way. It's Bigfoot Country Radio.